Hello, you are very welcome to this latest edition of the Under Centre Podcast Hour here with you, joined as always by Reen and Alex. Boys, how are we doing? All good. Good, yeah. Uh, not joined by Fionn today, obviously, because he died during his first game in the uh, Premier Division of AFI. Uh, he, had to, he had to do something to die in that game. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. He was the cleanest man coming off that field. <laughs> I think I tell you, there weren't many him. clean men. There weren't many clean men. <laughs> but now, congratulations to Fionn and the Panthers uh, male kid team for winning their opening game of the 2024 AFI season, beating the Minotaurs 33 to 6, which is a game we will definitely be speaking about in greater detail um, in the uh, the next few minutes. I actually just um, realized why he's not here today. He actually is probably still celebrating because it's his first win in. Four, four years, years. <laughs> four years now. Yep. At this stage. Oh, that's a tough one. I, I can't say much because I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I still have to wait for mine. <laughs> well, I, it could be worse. It could be me. I need to wait another year because my team no longer exists. So, yeah, that's not great. Yeah, well, look, listen, you chose not to get your ankle sorted in time so you couldn't play. That's so, true. that's, that's that, you're going to have to take the L on that one. But look, um, we have a pack show for you this evening. We are going to be starting off by talking about the We Rule, Rule of the World tournament, flag tournament that was on in the sports campus in uh, Blanchestown over the weekend. We're delighted to be joined by Panthers and Irish Wolfhounds player Jenny Cavanagh. Jenny, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Excellent stuff. We are delighted to have you on. I know we were meant to sort of organize something for the summer, which didn't happen. But um, what, what a time here with the, uh, the success, especially of the tournament there just last Sunday. Yeah, yeah, it's a serious change in the tide for like women in football, I think, in general in Ireland. And it's just it's so exciting. I keep getting emotional about it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, that's absolutely fine. And yeah. look. Listen, the day itself, you know, there was a lot of planning going into this was the first, um, obviously, iteration of this tournament in Ireland. And I think actually in Europe, it's mostly over in, in the States. Um, um, and, you know, props to, you know, American Football Ireland and, and Kelly Dwyer for putting everything together. But, you know, um, tell us about, you know, the day in general. How, how was the day in general and, and how did uh, how did things run? Yeah, so it was, I mean, overall, it was just a brilliant day. I couldn't, kind of couldn't get over, not that I've no doubt in Kelly's organisational skills, but just as these days tend to go when things are starting to schedule, they tend to be delayed and nothing was. Like, it just went absolutely perfectly. Um, everyone was so excited in the culture and the energy was just real positive. I think, I believe I only found this out after, but it makes a lot of sense now that the refs had a meeting before and were briefed on like, you know, obviously safety first, uh, but then it really is enjoyment and make sure that that's the key of the day. And it was really clear. I didn't, I just thought that kind of happened naturally. It makes more sense now that that conversation happened because that's exactly what the day was. Like it was really competitive, but then at the same time, like the minute a play was over, people were picking each other up, high five in, because, you know, you were also teammates on Wolfhounds, a lot of us. So you'd be like, oh, that was a really good play. Like while they're going by after, you know, tackling you down. So, uh, no, the whole day was amazing. It was just really well run. I mean, the sports campus is such a good venue. Um, besides the freezingness of the dome, <laughs> like you're roasting, and then all of a sudden, five minutes later, couldn't be colder. I don't know how the coaches and like, you know, uh, Teresa and Owen and the video video guys did it, but uh, yeah, such a good venue. I was going to say, like, I think all of all of us know from first hand experience yeah. playing in that dome, it is freezing if you're so- not constantly moving the whole time yeah. um but uh, like that um so many uh teams not just obviously from ireland um but also from the uk and abroad too but the fact as well that we had three representing teams with the rebels yourselves the panthers and the trojans and i guess if you want to count the the quetzals because they're lo- they're based in ireland but i think yeah. they still go as, as as a mexican team but the fact that we have that now, um, from where we have gone in the last year as well, from like 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 you and and the girls taking part in the European Championships mm-hmm. to having, you know, you know mixed teams in in the flag league to now having predominantly women only teams, we have more now coming along the way, especially in Cork down there with the with the tabbies, I believe that's they're called. Yeah. Um uh it's just it's the growth in the last year has just been 
extraordinary. Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, I don't think anyone expected it to grow this quickly. Um, we all planned for it in the sense of like, you know, coming just out of ECs, there was conversations had in Panthers anyway about like, let's just try women's team. Our plan was if we can get it together, then maybe we'll enter as a full women's team, but in the D1 league for next year. Um, no, like at that point being like, there's no other team, so that's all we're going to have to do. And then to all of a sudden be that there's enough teams now that the genuine question is, could there be a women's league? Like, that's amazing. I can't believe that's the case. We're the longest training. I think the most rest of them are only about a month or two, but they look strong. Like, it, they have a lot of veterans, I guess, on a lot of the other teams. So uh, they can come in and start, I suppose, a little bit at a higher level. Um, but I, I actually can't get over it. This time last year, we had a training session that I think there was 12 of us. And that wasn't, that's what was a mix of, you didn't have to be Irish to be there. They were just trying to get people to that we were getting reps against women. But that was like, Pretty much everyone who was playing in the country. <laughs> um, for the three, five fully supported teams, I'm counting the festivals. I know they consider themselves Mexican, they're Irish. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely phenomenal. And it's a real testament, they said, to AFI, but for the coaches and the players as well. Like the coaches are the ones who have to put together each of the clubs, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. And uh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention the the Phoenix team that represented. I had a few uh, other teams that were there on Sunday too. I, I forgot, I left them out by mistake. So my apologies um, on that one. But um, I we kind of opened it up to uh, the to the listeners and followers on on social uh, media, and we asked if they wanted to ask you any questions. And one of them we got in was actually from uh, Joe Buchanan, and he wants to know what the next step is going to be for women's flag domestically, in, in your view. I think it has to be a women's league. Um, you know, I actually love playing in the mixed league. I think it makes me a better player, but it's so different playing against women. And we found that in particular going to ECs, like it's just, it's a different game. Um, you think differently defensively, even offensively. Um, it, it just it just is a different vibe. You're also playing a different size ball to begin with. So even getting used to that. Um, but yeah, women's league has to be the way forward, um, especially for, you know, we had a lot of women who joined the women's team who said they were watching the mixed team, wanted to come down and play, were just nervous about playing on a mixed team. So it just opens up avenues for far more players to come in and play who would just be too nervous playing in a mixed league, you know. Um, so I think that has to be the next step. I think it naturally will go there, do you know. Yeah, and, and just going back to, to Sunday because um, we we got some of the, the stats and, you know, for yourself personally, it was quite a day with, with six touchdowns, including a, a game-winning pick six um, and the only scores in the semis and final. Um, and from speaking to um, whoever looks after the, the Panthers' social media, I believe a certain um, Phoebe Schechter now fears Jenny Kavanagh. <laughs> don't, don't know about that, but... Uh... But yeah, we, 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 you know what? We, that final was unbelievable. That was the only loss we had all day out of the six games. And it was probably my favorite game just because it was actually so competitive. And I've been watching Sacks in the City tape for about a year now. Like we were watching them preparing for ECs just because of how good they are. And also they've got a mix of international athletes across different countries. So they're just good to watch in terms of trends and things. Um, and I can't believe that we put up a competitive game against them. Um, I suppose maybe it was to my benefit that I've watched them before. I kind of know a little bit of what Phoebe wants to do. I'm a big fan of hers. Um, so maybe that helped me a little bit. But uh, yeah, I, I was delighted with the day overall. Um, yeah, it was. It was It was a really good day. Excellent. Um, should ask just on a side note, because um, myself and Rain are obviously um, friends of former, well, current and former teammates of uh, a certain Lisa Brown, who uh, plays now yeah. with the Panthers flag team too. Um, how is how is she getting on? She's getting on so well. I didn't realise, uh, I mean, I guess when I think about it now, I think I just hadn't consciously thought of it, but after the first game, she was like, we won a game. I was like, yeah. She's like, I don't win games. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Lisa. I'm going like, to have to have words with Lisa. That is yeah, yeah, just yeah. still yeah. a story. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah. She, she's she's doing so well. And you know what, Lisa, the big thing about Lisa for me is that she's just really good energy. Like she's, she'll be consistently there kind of hyping up everyone else, whether she's on the pitch or not. Um, she's also, just because her IQ is a, is a little probably high, just from knowing the sport, like, you know, there is obviously a lot of transfer across from kitted to flag. So no, she's a good asset to have on the team. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and I asked because, you know, 
Lisa, I don't know if people aren't aware with Lisa, she actually had a career in boxing before coming to American football. And she was, uh, I remember she told me she was quite close to making it to the Olympics. And now with the Olympics on the horizon and the fact that flag football is going to be in the Olympics, um, what what happens now next when it comes to the Wolfhound side of things? Is there any information given yet about qualifying for the Olympics or when, when qualification is going to begin? Um, I don't, I don't know exactly when, when it was announced, there was a lot of talk of the next Europeans being the qualifications of it. Um, but worlds I'd imagine will seed people. So I don't know exactly how they, how they're going to look at qualifications. I would imagine it'll either come down to a seeding of sorts, um, or the Euros is right before it though. So that, that's my only concern that they probably wouldn't leave it too late. So I don't know whether there'll be like a first round that get in and then there's like, you know, a backdoor channel through maybe the competitions the year before. And um, Worlds is this August. So I would think they'll seed everyone off of that and then go from there. But I haven't actually heard how they're going to do it. I don't even know if they've confirmed the number of teams. There was, it was mentioned when it was released, but I don't know if anything has been fully confirmed yet. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I just I hope we're uh, with the Wolfhounds like we're we're training now, obviously, as if we're going to world, but with the long term goal of Olympics. Um, but I, I just hope we're not not a bit too late for it. That's my only kind of concern for it. But I think all we can do is continue to train for it and be ready. Um, if the day comes, you know, it would be an absolute dream come true, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, um, Flagapalooza is on the horizon as well for yeah. for the Panthers. They're going to be heading over. Um, is there is there a full squad going over for for that one as well? Not yet. I think we've got ten of our athletes confirmed, which is, I mean, enough to obviously play. I'm hoping that Sunday Gone will actually entice more to finally confirm. Um, I think there probably was like that. You know, the Sunday Gone was the first competitive reps for the team and for majority of our team are rookies so for them as well and um, so I'm hoping that kind of eases all their nerves and the reason Flag of Palooza is just such a good tournament to uh, I nearly called it a festival because it is a festival tournament uh, to go to is that I think there's the element of fun with it naturally and um, not that I I think that'll come come anyway no matter what the festival but just to to ease people into it I guess because international tournaments are no joke like they are they're quite you know they can be quite serious you play a lot of games in one day but I mean, to me, all every single one of the players has just proved they can do it to everyone. <laughs> so I think the flag is going to be good. And the Trojans are going too. So that's going to be good. Like we got the two teams together um, and I'd say we'll stick together and, you know, try if we're all camping, we'll camp together and that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And look, it, it, like I said, Sunday was a fantastic day overall, not just, of course, for the Panthers, just for flag football in Ireland to have that many teams represent Ireland, that many teams to come over as well, and for it to now hopefully, uh, with the flag season, oh, I'm totally out of loop now with the flag season. When does the flag season start? The, the, it's now going to start in September, I believe. It used to be July, September. but they're moving it again. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. So okay. we got a while to go just... yet for that. Yeah. So absolutely no chance of getting any good weather at all for any of the flag games. No. No. I'm, yeah, I'm still. I'm like. I think. Yeah. As a club, we're and probably other clubs are going to have to look into uh, pitches. I reckon because uh, coming up to like you know playoffs and that last year we had so many sessions cancelled due to unplayable pitches, but also our like midweek sessions we've no floodlights, so it'll be you know getting pretty dangerous by the time you're finishing your session. So yeah. I reckon. Uh, I reckon. Yeah, we're going to have to look into figuring that one out. But uh, I think, you know, most teams, I think, are getting on the bandwagon a bit of the broad tournaments. So I reckon, like, we're going to go back training from the mix. The women's team aren't stopping. Um, but the mixed team point of view will go back training as well pretty quickly um, in preparation for those first and then on to the league. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And for anyone who's... Um listening or watching that is interested in getting involved in the flag side of things whether they be male or female um and they want to uh, maybe head down to the panthers what's the best way of contacting them the instagram page is the best way i would say because everyone's just so active on that all the time but also to any of the athletes like if they have anyone already on instagram um, or any of their numbers or anything just to message people will chop people's hands off to get them to come down just because we have a full squad we don't even need more players but just everyone's so hyped about more women playing the sport so uh, yeah. they'll definitely get met with an enthusiastic message and like, you know, any level 
even if you're coming from not playing a sport since you were 12, will be welcomed. You know, we we always go over fundamentals and have that a big part of training. So no one will be too late to join. Yeah. Now, yeah, so does it feel a little strange to be seen as, you know, one of the faces or the pioneers of, you know, women's flag in the country? Um, not even weird, but like it's sort of like a, a badge of honour now that you have that you you get to represent sort of Irish flag football and now that you get to you get you're one of the um what's what's the word that I'm looking for? Trailblazers, I think is the word. Trailblazers, that's the word. Thank you. Um you know because you're getting you're you're here now at the start of this movement before it as it's really starting to explode. Uh yeah I don't I don't know if I would say it feels it feels weird. Um well, I suppose what the strange thing about it is that I just really thought that, you know, we ever trying to make as an elite athlete was well gone <laughs> from about the age of 16. So it's uh, it's mad to be, I mean, considered old in terms of sports wise, right? Like it's mad to be in your 30s and be kind of then not even reaching your peak yet. Like I don't believe I'm anywhere close to peak that I can be at. So um, to be kind of considered to be, you know, one of the the best in the sport right now and you know, leading this this Irish team, leading my club's team and all that. Like, it's a real honour. Um, I can't believe that I've been given the opportunity. Um, but it's, to be honest, it's more just motivating that people are kind of using using the face or using the name because I'm going, like, I better, no one better catch me. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to get so much better because I'm like, these young ones are coming. They're, they're going to be so much yeah. better so quick and my body's only deteriorating, you know. Um, so I'm just I'm just trying to train hard, get to the gym, yeah. Um, just to keep it up and try, kind of, I suppose, be be the what do you would call it, the role model for the younger players. Like that's a big thing. Whatever about the players who are in the sport now, like I just look at younger younger girls, um, and I want them to see that it's possible at any time. Because when I was 16 and didn't make it in, I played loads of sports then. Like didn't you know go go too far in any of them? I figured at the time that was it right like you didn't have much other chances um and so to have gotten a chance at this point just kind of proves that you can do you can do it if you want you know just put your I didn't even know it wasn't even a plan at the start <laughs> it was just for fun but uh but then once once you see the see the the option I guess just take it with both hands you know mm -hmm. and that is the word actually I was looking for Reen you were wrong it's actually role model not trailblazer that was the word trailblazer <laughs> you try it look listen a for effort a for effort on that one. Alex is very quiet over there. No help at all. No, well, yeah. listen. <laughs> listen, Jenny, it's been fantastic to speak to you about the game. We hopefully will have you on closer to, to the flag season for sure. And um, like I said, if you are interested in playing flag and you're around the, the Panthers area, get in touch with their social media pages. Um, congratulations on the last year from Ireland to the Panthers. Um, can't wait to see what comes next for uh, women's flag. Yeah, great. Thanks so much, guys. Really appreciate it. No problem at all. No problem at all. Um, and thank you so much to uh, Jenny for uh, hopping on there. We're going to move on now to the uh, kid, uh, kid action. Sorry, from the weekend. And joining us, we're delighted to welcome on head coach of the Donegal Dairy Vipers, who's been very patient and um, waiting for us there. It's Garrett Gordon. How are you, pal? Good, good. Thanks for having me on. No problem at all. No problem at all. Our first time we actually we've had uh, anyone from the Vipers on the show. We didn't get a chance to speak to speak to his last year. So um you're de we're delighted to have you on to to speak about all things uh, Vipers. I don't think we were in the position to talk last year with the kind of results we were having, so I'm glad you didn't have us all. <laughs> Oh well, look, listen. It doesn't matter. You're talking to two former pirates here. You know all about, like how bad results can get. Listen, so there's no no trouble there at all. But look, listen. Um, first of all, before we get into the action, you know, um, from last week and, um, how has uh, things with the Vipers in the off season been? Because we've seen obviously with with the announcement that you've got your own home ground for both flag and kitted, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so a lot of work, especially has gone in in the background to sort of you know secure the future of the club the this season actually started off well may as well start with last season like last season to be honest with you, the club was the club was on its knees to be honest with you, there was talk of us maybe actually probably the league but between the committee and a few like older players that have played previous seasons came back myself included i had actually i was actually a head coach previously and actually had give up playing and I came back to play last year 
And to be honest with you, bluntly, the head coach that was meant to be there didn't turn up. And the committee asked myself and a couple of other former coaches to step in. We had no pre-season. We had no what, four weeks training before our first game. That's basically what we were like last season. We were running with maybe 17, 18 players. And uh, at the end of that season, obviously everybody knows the results. But then coming into this season, the committee, everybody behind the scenes has actually started working really hard. Uh, recruitment was great. To be honest with you, we were sitting with maybe 30, 32 players. So we were, a few get injured. So they did with him that there. We're down to maybe about 26, 27 players. And then, to be honest with you, I thought we were in a, a better place before Sunday happened. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we'll, we might as well then have a chat. Obviously, the season doesn't begin as you would have liked. Um, uh, at this point in defeat against the Craig Avon Cowboys at home, uh, 44 to nil. Um, but uh, still, like you're saying, for those rookies, a, a learning experience for a premier to come up against a premier division side um for them to sort of blood into into playing this new this new game for them the, the, to be honest with you, you see sunday had like it was nothing to do with rookies like the rookies they're like we talk about things we talk about passion we talk about attitude we talk about family like they showed everything on sunday against the cowboys the cowboys were just better than us like be honest with you, it's probably down to myself and the coaches that we didn't have them properly prepared for the game. Like I put nothing, nothing on the players at all. Like it's down to myself mm-hmm. as a head coach that I didn't have them prepared enough to go into the game. To be honest, like I said, I actually thought we were going into the game a lot stronger than we showed up. Uh, I think a few players maybe had a bit of nerves. They never played before. They said after the game they were a bit nervous. Uh, apart from that, there. Honestly, the Cowboys were just better. Like, like the season we had last season, and then going into this season, we were never going to pull up trees. We were never going to go and beat every team. I wasn't expecting that, but I expected a better performance from us. But like I said, that's down to myself and the coaches, nobody else. Yeah, you. you I mean, you were coming up against a, a Shamrock Bowl quarterback and and a man who's represented his country, you know, in Peter Lockman. So I don't really think it's any shame. Uh, to to get beaten by by that side at all, so uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, Alex, there's, there's better days to come for you this season. I'd, I'd say. Uh, the only way is up. Like Alex, I remember like playing against Jews when I first started playing against the Cowboys. Like, we were beating all these teams. We were getting to the semi-finals of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. We were like, honestly, we were a field goal away from being an SBC team. And of course, like in my eyes, and I'm going back what maybe six seven years ago. But it's just the progression. Like older players leave, so they do. Players get older and. The problem we've had in, in the Derry, Donegal area is that we still aren't, the league, American football still isn't known. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm still going downtown, talking to people. People see me in my Vipers gear and say, oh, what's that there? And you're saying, oh, we're American football. Team. What do you mean American football? Where's that? Do you know what I mean? That's still the mindset in the Northwest. So it's like, I'm not, I'm originally obviously not from here. I'm from Balmina, but I've been living here for 14 years. But there's still the mindset here. Like I know if we can tap into that, which we are trying to do by doing stuff like this here, coming on the podcast, talk about the social media, everything like talking to schools, jag tag, everything. Like once we get our name out, I know the only way is up for us. Like we have a catchment area of maybe what hundred thousand, maybe hundred fifty thousand people. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. to me, to me, like I see teams. I'm not just talking about yourselves, like Pirates, Galway Warriors. When I was there. There's other teams that have maybe folded and never come back. Like mm-hmm. we've never, never, ever forfeited a game, no matter what numbers. I remember going down and play Eagles before COVID, and we had 13 players, but we went down and played. Do you know what I mean? We've never, never forfeited a game. We just, we always want to give it all. We think the league's amazing, so we do. Honestly, like once people buy into it, I'm sure Alex, your team's the same. Like Louis, yours, yours is the same. The Pirates. Once people buy in, they never want to leave because of the just the atmosphere about every team. It's just like. Just passion, just family. That's that's the way we do it. A hundred percent. What you're on about there, like I mean, the, the parallels with with ourselves are are very similar. And so the recovery from COVID was was difficult. We were lucky. Uh, we had so many veterans that were able to come back. Um, but yeah, that's it. You need to just get the buy in. You know, the the sports on the rise, and if it, it's kind of like it's kind of if you if you can hang in there and keep going. You will, you will get reward for that perseverance. I think uh, 
you know, and 100%, pretty important. Like, like, even, like even I can see the progression even from like we started training what October. Like some guys, some of the older guys didn't come out in January, which kind of didn't help us. But I see the progression and the rookies we've had from October to now. Like it maybe didn't show on Sunday, but I know that they've got that first game out of them. Like everybody knows you're nervous getting anything you want to do first. Like even coming on to here, you're nervous coming on here, like myself doing something, I guess. But I know once that game's over them, it's out of their mind. You forget about it. I know from now on that, well, hopefully, hopefully against the Giants, we'll be better prepared and ready to go. Yeah. But sure, look, Eric, you're not sounding nervous at all. You're sounding grand. Don't worry about that now. <laughs> but look, listen, the one thing as well that the Vipers have in their favour here as well is that you have the bones and the foundations of like, of a good team because not just a kid. You have a good flag team. You have a good youth team set up as well. So like that, it is just about, you know, like that getting the name out there and look, if it is ourselves that can do it, we'll help as best we can. It's... You know, even just, like I said, just going back to the Pirates, trying to go on recruitment days and trying to stop people as they're walking around shops and trying to get them interested in American football. You know, so, you, you get a lot of people will take leaflets and say, oh, yeah, I'll be down. But whether they actually come down is a whole different thing. See, to be honest, if he was, see what I know is going to change the club as a youth. Like we have, mm -hmm. we have one guy, two, three, sorry, three guys have come up this year. We have another four guys that come up now in June, the turn 18 in June. Like, there's seven extra players. And there's seven extra players that have played full kit. There's seven extra players that know what the Vipers are about. There's seven extra players that want to be part of the team. They're not wanting to go off to play for other teams. Like, they're based here and they want to be here. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's why I know. Like, to be honest with you, that's what kind of messed about with us on Sunday. Or, like, to be honest with you, one of the star players, we got Gavin Weatherall's came up from the youth team. Plays for the low founds or running back, he got injured in the first play on Sunday. So we were having to throw other people yeah. in that maybe that's like I said, that's down to me, you know, having a plan B. Like, how do you plan for one of your better players getting injured? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's like the youth. I can, I recommend any team to go with youth. And to be honest, I was one of the first that wasn't that enamored with it. To be honest with you, I was like, youth player, we have to go through CF card and we have to do this to get it. But there's a one of the coaches now, Lyons, he's actually one of the coaches of the Wolfhound uh, under 19s team as well. Like he championed the thing from the start. And we're, I know in the next maybe two to three years, we're going to see the fruits of that. Do you know what I mean? Like seven players, and they're still in our 13 or 14, and they're maybe next year and the year after to come through. Like that's just the foundation we have to build on. Yeah. And that's oh, it. And, and look, looking ahead then to. Uh, not this weekend, obviously the following weekend, straight back into it with a game against the Giants. So it's kind of a, you go, you, you, you go up against, you know, the recently relegated, you know, Cowboys with like, um, like Alex said, with, with, with someone like Peter Lochran and uh, who's played for his country, playing QB and slinging it around to, to playing the Giants now that are getting their first taste of the with Division 1 football after getting promoted from Division 2 last year. You know, is this? I know you were saying that it's about improving the team, and you know, um, is this one of the games though, that you would target um, for the lads and say this is this is the winnable games? These are the ones that that can help us, you know, set us up for a good season. See, see, be honest, I at the start of the season, I was actually targeting trying to beat every team, and that's the goes on the truth. Mm -hmm. But at the same time. See, before we got the rookies in and before the league changed, I was saying to the committee, we're a Division Two team. And that's the cause of the truth because we were running with 16, 17 boys. Like, we were running down. So, for like, I know you're, you're saying about the Giants. Like, I consider us at the same level as Giants. You know what I mean? It's going to be an even match. So it is. But we're going into it. Want to win. We're going into it thinking we can win. And if players aren't the guy there, and I say to them every week, if you don't want to win every game, if you don't think you can win every game, I don't want them in the team. Like I'm just being brutally honest. I say to them, like, boys, don't come here. If you don't want to come here with the mindset you want to train the one, there's no point in being here. That's my philosophy anyway, in play. And I honestly, I honestly went into the game on Sunday think it was going to be a hell of a lot closer. And I think it would have, don't get me wrong, and Cowboys towards the park, like, uh, they did. But uh, like I've went, went through the game table the last couple of days, like we missed a lot of tackles which is basic stuff, like coverage, 
you know what Peter Locker is about. He's going to throw it deep because he can. But it was just just basic stuff that we let ourselves down. But it's not it's not on the player. Like I said, it's on myself as head coach and all those coaches that we didn't have them better prepared for the Sunday. Mm-hmm. But go Absolutely. back. Sorry, I'm well off on there. Go yeah. back to your Saturday Giants. I don't I don't uh, consider them to be an easy touch for us. We're going to win. I think we can win, but I know it's going to be hard game. Yeah. I know. Uh, it will be. And look, I I have first hand experience of playing playing the Giants. They they are a tough side. They play tough, and they are going to give whoever they play a decent game. Um, and it is a game. If I wasn't playing on the same day, I'd love to be able to go and watch it there myself. But unfortunately, I have a little matter to attend to in Newbridge against the uh, Crusaders, so I won't be available that day. Um, listen. I, I hope to stay with us there now, Garrett. We're of just going to have a chat about the uh, the other two games from the weekend in the Premier Division. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the Vikings uh, 0, the Trojans 38. The Trojans kick off their season with a, a comprehensive win in Limerick. Um, the Vikings coming off their 24-24 draw last week against the Admirals. Um, are succumbed to their first defeat in the Premier Division. Um, Alex, a bit of controversy in this game as well. Yeah, yeah. Already, uh, already starting. Only starting off the season week two, and we've already got a game where uh, the TPOs didn't show up for us. Um, I believe it was get down in the schedule to be the the Wexford Eagles, um, and I suppose if that if that is the case, it's not great. They I know they did that last year, um, a couple of times, definitely in a in a game we were involved in. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not a great start to the season. I mean, they're they're probably scheduled for another three games this year, the same as as every other team to be down to to TPO it. And uh, I think the the league really need to address it with them and and kind of come up with with some solution to it because i mean it's not fair on the other teams i believe uh the um ul were without their defensive backs coach then because he was uh refereeing and i assume assume two other uh, members i don't know were they not play, not available to play anyway or were the other coaches but i mean that just hamstrings a team uh and it's really just not 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 a great way to to be like uh, everyone you know rep, hard enough to get tpos i know we struggle to to get tpos every year but you yeah you, you put them together and you get them down there to ref the games because it's the only way that we can all play um and yeah I, I don't know what the the solution is but i i think the league need to really start looking ahead already at it to, to stop it happening again yeah and really yeah. look you know yourself Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, it, it can't be the Eagles doing this like on purpose because they're hampering themselves. They're going to get a points deduction for this now, and they should realistically be aiming for the playoffs or at least going deep into that Shield tournament in Division 1 this season. And if they keep missing these TPO assignments and getting points deducted, they're going to be nowhere. They're going to be down the bottom of the table, so they, they, they do need to get that in order. Hopefully there was some sort of mix-up or communication error between them and the league that this could be resolved quickly. But uh, yeah, it's 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 something that just looks bad on the league and really needs to be sorted out, as Alex said. I know last season they didn't fulfill fixtures, but they did say themselves that they hadn't got anyone trained and that there was no opportunities to train the new guys. But there has been now this off-season to do that. Um, so I don't know if if they just didn't show up. I don't know. I know there was one up north. I think they had to do one in Dublin. I think this is why they might not get away with it, but might not necessarily get a points deduction. There was meant to be a course in Dublin. It got cancelled. There was also a course up north um, that did go ahead, but they were meant to do another one in Dublin, but I don't think that went ahead they, either. They, and, I, I believe they did have it. Uh, yeah, they had one in Dublin... Uh, in Blanchard's town, yeah, or was it was it moved to Mullingar, or was it in Blanchard's town in the end? I can't remember, but there was definitely there was three hells. There was one uh, the, up in Derry, uh, there was one or or ground, yeah, yeah. There's definitely one in Derry. There was one in Belfast, and I believe there was one in either Blanchard's town or Mullingar. Um, I think that one was cancelled, and I don't think they. No, no, one no, one the one, as one, well. 
I don't know. There was definitely one in Newbridge that was cancelled because of a frozen pitch, Dara. Uh, okay. And it was moved uh, to another weekend. I know because I ended up, it would have been the handiest one for me, and I ended up not being able to go because I uh, was away that weekend or something. But uh, there was definitely three held this year, and I don't know, was there any sort of online supplementation? But surely, again, the league would have known if Wexford didn't send any TPOs to get trained. Surely they knew, well, they don't actually have any referees to fulfill this fixture. Can we proactively do something about that? It's, it's communication on both sides, though, right? Like, the Wexford Eagles should be saying, you have us down to ref this game, we don't have any refs, you guys need to sort this out. It can't be on the Eagles organisation to send referees if they don't have them, but also they need to make the, the league aware uh, of that fact. Yeah. Totally agree. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's not something we want to be talking about in week two of the season. Like, and it's not to say that it's excusable, but you can understand it happening at the end of a season where lads are injured. Maybe it's the start of summer. People might have gone on holidays and stuff. You know, there, there has to be a bit of contingency. But if ever you can't send a referee uh, or or a set of referees, you have to contact the league and allow them to put contingency into place to, to stop this happening. It's, it's really every club not meant to have five or six. Sorry, I'm Alex. Every club no, yeah. not meant to have five or six TPO. I think the requirement is to have a minimum of six. Uh, and yeah, we, we all know we, we get three, three or four assignments every year. Uh, and if you don't fulfill them, and they're well in advance as well. So it's not as if they're sprung on them. It's not as if it's just mm-hmm. right, you're going next week down to Limerick for a match. Like you get well in advance of where you're going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that is something. And look, listen, we don't know the background in terms of, I don't know if Wexford have been, you know, onto the league to tell them, look, listen, we're due. Maybe they were in contact before this game saying, look, guys, we are due to ref this game on Sunday or in a few weeks. Maybe they just did a few weeks ago and said, look, we don't have any trained officials. You haven't put on a course. We need something where then the league could say, right, change that fixture. Just for argument's sake, Alex, just assign the Mavericks to that fixture so that they can do that and take move it around. But I don't know. Um, I don't know if the, the communication has been there or was it a thing, like you said, that was sprung up there on the day on Sunday? Um, yeah, I know it was, def- it was definitely sprung on the two teams because it was a surprised yeah. text I got off on the lad saying it's just TBOs that not showed up. <laughs> um, we actually have not mentioned even the game yet. <laughs> of no, all of that, no, it's just it, all it. referees. All anyway, but um, a very good win for the Trojans. They start the season um, with a win in a year that they are hoping to start better than they did last year. Um, you know, they seen you know the Rebels lose their first game. They seen um, the Panthers. Oh well, they would they would have seen now that the Panthers have started quite well as well. So playoff positions and seeding is definitely up for grabs and. Um, Alex, you know, just uh, exactly the start that the uh, the Trojans would have wanted. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the sort of lay down a marker for how they want the season to go. Uh, they absolutely dominated on defence. I believe they, they gave up one first down all day on defence. Uh, and they, they just got in control early and never let up because I think they knew as well from week one that UL are more than capable of making a comeback so once they got on top they stayed on top and made sure not to let any complacency slip in and um, you know they're a, a great outfit they're really well drilled and their, their coaches would have had them you know even before the uh, week one skit result happens they would have you know taken nothing for granted uh, i think in the end they even were able to give some sympathy snaps to their resident podcasters there you know uh, <laughs> well look their resident podcasters were in charge of taking the stats and meant to send them to me but they didn't do that so um they're in the they're in the bad books now for that only special team reps now in next uh next game yeah definitely um, they've got a they've got another long bus trip now next game as well so uh i think they're down in cork down in cork uh, that's yeah, it in, in week april. four on the 7th of april yeah yeah so so two two long trips down for them but uh I think they'll be buoyed by they'll be confident, you know, buoyed by that results, confident in their abilities, and I think they really want to look to to break that, uh, break that two horse race, you know, up, uh, and get involved there and maybe make a, make it back to another Shamrock Bowl. 
Uh, for UL, though, I think uh, definitely a chasing them defeat, but uh, I think they've they've got to expect to take some L's, you know, uh, coming up to the SBC this season. But uh, they don't really have time to to dwell on it or lick their wounds. I think they've, they've obviously got the bye week this week, and then they are hosting uh, the defending champion Rebels the following week. So you know they're just they're just taking oh, their, their licks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they just they just are getting up off the mat again and ready to go. As as I think we know the well, they're they're always going to be fighters. They'll just pick themselves up and be ready to go. And then they have UCD after that as well, just to make just things even easier. The joys, the joys. But uh, going back to going back to the Trojans, I think they have a bit of a chip on their shoulder this season. Practically nobody has talked about them as being contenders. Some people are talking about them as being like kind of on the bubble in terms of getting into that playoffs i think they really want to prove that this is not as alex said a two horse race this is a three horse race and they need to be taken seriously they have a huge squad up there very well drilled and i could see them doing a lot of damage this season agree yeah, yeah. absolutely absolutely especially four when eggs, they get four eggs favors as well sorry the four eggs favors playing for them as well yeah so maybe it's us that's bringing them up to could, could be that's well, look, bit. listen. Uh, well, that's the thing, and you know, it's it, it is tough. That's one tough thing as well, with just the the fluidity of being able to to move clubs. It can be tough, you know, when you're trying to build a team, um, and players just go off somewhere else. Um, sorry, Rain, I know I moved, but get over it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um. Moving on to the second game that was in Sanctuary, uh, the South Dublin Panthers 33, the Westmead Minotaurs 6. Um, a fantastic game for new head coach Owen O'Sullivan, um, and especially for Finn Cairns, three passing touchdowns and a rushing touchdown of his own um, in a dominant performance in which I, you could probably say, lads, that the Minotaurs maybe failed to live up to their end of the bargain in this game. Yeah, I definitely think the, the, the flatter to deceive uh, on, on Sunday. It was a slow starting for both sides. Uh, the the Minotaurs kept it tight up until probably the second half until the Panthers took off. But um, yeah, I think I think the Minotaurs would be quite disappointed in their, their show in the, in the second half. It was very sloppy. I watched, I watched the live stream up until it cut off. Uh, and it was quite sloppy football, but um, that's that's week one for you. You, you got to imagine that those lads um, will be regrouping now and thinking, you know, what did we do wrong? How can we fix it? They've got a game. They, you know, their next game now is the Knights as well. The Panthers, I think, are both both of their next games are the Knights. So uh, it'll be a, a good uh, barometer of where they're all at. Um, probably three sides you, you'd. Uh, Pin maybe not the Panthers, but with three sides you pin more for the the shields than potential playoffs. The Panthers probably looking for more than that, to be fair. And off the back of that week one victory, you know who who would really deny them? You're going to get me in trouble with the Panthers now for this show, saying that they are going for the shield and not for the Shamrock Bowl this no, year. No, 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 no. Fair, fair enough. Uh, the Panthers probably are looking <laughs> to looking to bigger things. Sorry, oh, Fionn. No. Sorry. And <laughs> Fionn, yeah, Fionn doesn't care. He got his win. That's it. He's done yeah. now for the season. Um, but yeah, it, it was a really, really good win. And um, there are highlights available on our on our YouTube channel if you want to check them out. Um, we got, to, you know, it it is it. It's, I don't want to, you know, first game, first take, uh, hot takes. You know, they're always blown out of proportion but you know the the team seems to live or die by finn um and god forbid he gets injured because if he does they're they're in trouble but also you know they put a lot of work into their running attack this year with not just finn but also you know i think they're after getting um scary after getting Luke Carey, Connor Hoskins is getting into another year as well after coming up from the youth squad. So it is a, a very good running attack that they have too. And of course, as Sean Goldrick is back playing yeah. wide receiver. So I'm kind of contradicting my own statement here as I'm talking. So uh, I'm going to shut up and let someone else speak there. 
Dominant on defense, of course, with their new uh, yeah. safety in there. Very clean safety, but safety nonetheless. Uh, yeah, now look, watching that game there on Sunday, Finkerns is electric. That 84-yard touchdown that he had with his legs, unbelievable. Three passing touchdowns, absolutely excellent. I would agree with Alex that they are probably aiming for the playoffs and probably looking to upset some people there. They maybe don't have the squad size that the other three guys in that conversation do have, but it's not the worst either. I mean, they were in a much worse position last season. They were going to games with 18, 19 guys. I didn't do a head count on the day, but it looked like they certainly had above 22 or 23 players, which is great Mm -hmm. to see. So, uh, just any sort of depth that they can get. A lot of it coming from the Panthers. I saw a few familiar fa- or Panthers from the Pirates. Saw a few familiar faces down there. Um, but yeah, look, it's it's good to see and um, whatever they can do to kind of mix up that uh, that battle up the top of the SBC, all the better. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. In, in in conclusion, the demise of the Panthers was greatly exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, and I, and I think I think they'll it. take. I think they'll take fantastic pleasure for the entire season in reminding us <laughs> all that we uh, we might have uh, egged it on a bit. In particularly, well, in your, given... where, where did you have them in your rankings, Sarah? Your rankings, we Fort. we we we, ha- we always point out. Yeah, Fort. we had nothing to do with it. Yeah, yeah. I got in more trouble. Sarah, with, really. I got in more trouble with Cork because I Aye. let them out of my rankings. You know, yeah. so. Um, they're they're the ones that are more angrier at me than than the Panthers. I think the Panthers are okay, but Garrett, um, I want to ask you then about the the Minotaurs because obviously, from their time playing in in Division One, you would have um had a few matchups against them. Um, you know, Joe Kinahan is obviously a very uh, talented quarterback. Um, they are a strong side. Um, the numbers on Sunday look pretty good as well. Which um in previous years hadn't been always the case for for the Minotaurs, but um would you look at just solely looking at the result and sort of history with them, would you sort of be thinking this is kind of just an outlier and you'd expect them to get things back on track now for the rest of the season? See, to be honest, I don't know. Uh the, when like I was just saying earlier, when I was playing against the Minotaurs because I had took a couple of years out, like we were beating teams like the Minotaurs. So we were so I don't really know what about. I know what SBC is about. And I know the difference between Division One and going up there. I know they stayed up last year, but was that a case of Peter Locker out for the Cowboys and the Cowboys being a lot worse off? And that's why they were so good and they stayed up. Mm-hmm. I know they won a few games, but is that what it was? But yeah, I, th- I think well, with any. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, no, yeah, with any league, it was kind of. It came down to the to the Knights and, and the Cowboys last year. I think the Minotaurs beat both the Knights and the Cowboys, which, like you said, got them that safety. Yeah, but I think, I think the question is, if Steve, you've got a good quarterback, I think any team can beat any team. I think, and or I know in this one it comes down. I think it comes down to that anyway. If you've got a good quarterback, because mm-hmm. most teams in Division One run the ball. That's the difference between I think, Division One and SPC. SPC quarterbacks can all throw the different options. I know. No, our case this year we actually have a QB so the can that can actually throw the ball. So we're trying to get away from the run pass kind of offense. But yeah, going back to your question, I think they've got enough to stay up. I think it could be Limerick, could be the top, be the ones that are coming back. I know they've been the SBC team, but there's a big difference. Yeah. Alex, you know yourself, you played yeah. there, you know. Yeah, yeah, you are you are right with that sort of uh, having that multi-dimensional offense does make a difference. And when it clicks, the 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 Minotaurs can be excellent and certainly could beat uh, most teams in that division. They do have an exciting wide receiver core. I mean, we even saw even on a day where they were faltering, maybe they they, well, they uncorked a, a near fifty-yard touchdown. Uh, you know, to keep it close, they 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 are always capable of that. So. Yeah, you are definitely right there, Gareth, and say they're 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 definitely not gonna be uh, whipping boys by any stretch this year. They're not gonna lose every game and go down, they'll they'll put it up to teams hundred mm-hmm. percent. Actually that now that you mentioned the quarterback, that something that did we come across, Alex, um a little earlier on about uh, your quarterback having some rich family history when it comes to uh, American football? 
Yeah, yeah, I believe uh, the Vipers, the, the the Vipers QB has got a, a, a famous uh, grandfather. Is it or is a great grandfather? Yeah, <laughs> played in NFL. So yeah, Dan Danica, he's actually New Yorker. So he's he's actually been living literally two minutes away from where we're at now. And he's never knew about the Vipers until until the, this season. And that's what I mean. That's why I'm saying he's about getting the word out. He never knew until we were close and it came out. That we've got as the veil center, you know, now is like a we're trying to make it a center of excellence for football kind of thing in the northwest. And he's come out, and to be honest with you, it's been a breath of fresh air. The captain that shows you as a rookie has come in to become a captain, yeah. But yeah, I'd, I'd say his, his experience and knowledge will, will be invaluable. Like, I mean, from no one from, from playing or even talking to some. American guys, they they grow up playing. Like nobody here grows up picking up an American football and throwing it. That and they all. I've seen him come coming to me and saying things. You know, this year, like he's played his whole life. You know, when an American, you know what I mean. He comes in. You know, we should do this way. We should do that. Like, and I'm hold my hands up. Yep. Yeah. I. Mm-hmm. Why do you tell me? And I will do it. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, it's no surprise that you know. Ty Henry's the best player in the, the, the league for a reason. Again, he, he grew up doing it and and uh, you know never really had a, had a break from it, still going at the, the top level. But that's why I think youth football's the way to go here. Like, if we can get you know, like young ones in at 15 through to 18, then three years of playing at football, going to the Wolf mm-hmm. Hounds, getting that hope as it, the hope thing where the Americans come over to the coach them, like that's just going to be beneficial to every team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like that, you mentioned the likes of a jag tag, and obviously with the Jaguars having a, a market in Ireland, and also the Steelers too. I think there's a Steelers camp pro- uh, planned for this year as well, and um, where they'll probably get some coaches over too. So th- that stuff is all just going to be, you know, great things for for growing the league. A hundred percent agree. Like jag tags up here in the Northwest, they're at five schools. They're one of the all girls school. We've been in there for the past. I think it's eight weeks doing jag tag with them. A few of them are coming out to play for our flag team. Like we have what three, four girls play for flag. That actually, we're playing in that Trojan team that played in the as you were talking about in the women's competition the weekend. Like like four of our players were playing for the Trojans because the Trojans didn't have enough mm-hmm. players, so they had to come to our team to take you know a few players to help them out. Which here are like happy days. Like that's just showing how good our players are. The other teams are wanting them to play for them. so they are yeah, more like I said, tournament more, experience as well that's that's it when they come back to our club then it just it just helps us so it does mm-hmm. like i think just as you were talking about our main thing this year is probably having the game to having their own women's team as well because mm-hmm. with jag tag in with the only girls school and having i think they trained up was it 18 coaches in the jag tag from the girls school they're in the four other schools like first year second years third year you know, like we were saying, like you get people bought in early. Like American football is going to be their only sport. That's all it's about mm-hmm. getting them in early, so they all. Fair. I love being this here. This is a family atmosphere. Let's keep at it. That's in my eyes, anyway. No, absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is where uh, I think we're going to wrap up this show. There's nothing to preview for next week because, of course, this weekend is Patrick's weekend, so we will not be having any football. Um, plenty of games to follow in week, though. I think there's seven, eight. Seven, yeah, I think there's two, Saturday two on the Saturday and, and five on the Sunday, yeah. I believe. Yeah, Saturday is Giants and Vipers, and then also Crusaders and Rhinos. Um, so then, and then there's I think three games in the Premier Division Sunday, and another two on Sunday in Division One. So yeah, plenty so to talk yeah. about, guys. Thanks for having us on as well. Thanks very much. Listen, we really appreciate you, Garrett, coming on. Um, and listen, I. We wish you all the best of luck for the rest of the season. Like I said, before we do let you go, anyone that's listening to it uh, to do to this show, um, who's interested in getting involved in American football and is in the Donegal Dairy area, what's the best way to contact the team? Facebook. Go on to Facebook. Always somebody always picks up the message, let like, you know training times. Tra- we train on a Sunday morning, half nine to one o'clock, out in the Vale Center. So there's the Negleton, just like say, well, in Grace Dean, just like say the say. But Anybody wants to come down and get a go, recommend it. Anybody, so they they love it. Yeah, excellent stuff. Again, Garrett, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, guys. On. We really appreciate it. We'll hopefully have you on maybe again later on in the season. Again, just for a little update on how this how the year is going for the team. No problem. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Bye.
Lads, I really appreciate you coming on as always this evening. No problem. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Um, before we let you go, if you haven't already, um, oh, Garrett's already gone. Um, make sure you follow us on our socials at UnderCenterPod on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, that will get the latest updates for the show. Um, also, f- some clips as well. If you want to watch this show back at any point, you can just go to our YouTube channel, UnderCenter Podcast. That's where you'll find all of our shows so far this year, including uh, highlights of, like I said, the uh, Panthers game against the Minotaurs last week. Um, what else? If you want to listen to us on the go, under center podcast, wherever you get your podcast, that is where you will be able to listen to us. Spotify, Apple. Supposedly, now we're doing quite well in Luxembourg. I think we're like 30th in the Apple charts in Luxembourg. So, people from Luxembourg, thank you very much, I guess, for listening to last week's show. Keep listening. Um, Fionn uh, is getting in with a comment. He's not uh, all right to come on the show, but he's all right to say that they. Rhino's undefeated into week three. He's right and past week three as well. Make sure of that too. Um, Like I said, we're going to wrap up this edition. We will be back next week to preview the uh, games for the following week, including a certain debut for a certain Rhino. Um, So we'll see how that goes. And uh, Alex, you are going to be in action as well. You are at home to the Cowboys. Home to the Cowboys. No, away to the Cowboys. Away to the Cowboys. Away. Yeah, way. Oh. The road, yeah. I think we're uh, we're down for ref in your game as well on the Saturday, so oh, we're going to get see, two games in at the weekend. See, now you're going to get in a lot of trouble now for that because podcast friends and all this. Shit. And I've I've actually <laughs> recused myself. <laughs> um. Oh well, that's no fun. So I can't I even know. C- can't, can't even, even give me. A, you can't even give me a backhand. Though, I know. I know, double disappointment. <laughs> You're not going to be ref in my game. And now I've just figured out that I can't actually go up to Dundalk and watch you guys on Sunday either to see what it's like. No, so, no. double disappointment to end the show. Thank you very much for that. Um, like I said, uh, thank you so much for tuning in this evening. We'll be back again next week. Until then, stay safe and we will see you soon.